sobatbola.com dan juga bola.net uh, kembali lagi di uh, salah satu program mungkin yang terbaru juga ya ini di bola.com dan bola.net di YouTube-nya. Dan kalau biasanya saya itu ngobrol bareng sama Hendri, nah kali ini saya ngobrol sama salah satu pemain diaspora yang ada di Inggris, tepatnya di Manchester kalau nggak salah, ya nanti kita ngobrol lebih lanjut lah sama dia. Dan yang spesial adalah kalau kita denger namanya nih, dari namanya aja kita udah tahu bahwa dia itu Indonesia banget gitu. Dan dia uh, uh, berasal dari uh, salah satu ibunya, kalau nggak salah ibunya itu dari punya keturunan Bataknya, Bataknis, seperti itu. Nah, siapa dia? Nah, kita lanjut, kita sambut aja langsung nih. Hello, good afternoon, Joseph. Good afternoon. Well, how are you? Very good, thanks. And yourself? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm perfect, really. Um, well, be- before we move ahead about your your uh, the Federation of Indonesia uh, uh, approaching you, we start with uh, we want to know about you. Who yeah. is uh, Joseph? Well, can I call you Joe or Joseph? Yeah, call, call me Joe. Joseph. Okay, okay. To be honest, a lot of people call me Fergie. You know, like because uh, <laughs> <laughs> of my, my last name. So it's up to yeah. you. Call me Joe, Fergie, Joseph. It's up to you. So your your last name, your family name. It, it is. It, is it Simatupang or Ferguson? So it's. So I have it like double barrels. So it's Simatupang Ferguson, but obviously in the UK, he's Ferguson. Um, mm-hmm. from my father's side, who obviously was born in in England, and that's where. My family um, reached yeah. from. Yeah, it's about a naming naming situation, right? So um, yeah, I did I did uh, some research about you, and you are a right back. Is that right? Yeah, uh, you are right back, and and I I also read in transfer market that your contract with your contract with um, FC United of Manchester ended in June, just a few yeah. months. Yeah, and. Uh, what about now? What's the situation with you and your club and all? So the situation with me currently, um, yeah. it, I'm going back to play for FC United in Manchester. Uh, I've been offered another contract, which I've accepted. So that will mean I'll be playing with FC United in Manchester for another year. For another year, yeah? Yeah. Uh, where, where are they playing, actually, in the pyramid of um, football in UK? So we play in what's called the Northern Premier League. Now, if you look at the pyramid of football in the UK, it's, it's I understand it's quite hard to understand because it's um, it's quite big. Oh. So obviously you have the f- the five professional leagues of Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two. Sorry, four pro- professional leagues of Premier Premier League, Championship, League mm-hmm. One, and League Two. And then in England, we have the semi-professional and non-professional leagues. So that will be National League. So that is made up of like the best non-league teams up and down the country. And then it's then split into sections like regions. So you have National League and then you have My League, so which is Northern Premier League. So from in My League, we'll play teams that in around like Newcastle. We'll say I'm based in Manchester and... Yeah. Um, FC United is based in Manchester, play teams in Liverpool, all over that northern part of the region. But um, I think sometimes people can get sort of misled by the word semi-professional. Um, there's some some teams in one league above who are full-time teams who play and train every day just like a, a, a League One or Championship or even a Premier League team. And uh, each team obviously pays, pays the players to play um spectators come can come down to games for me uh, fc united we've had i think the largest attendance was away last year was probably about 4500 so it's a very like well supported league um but yeah it's not it's not um the same as the professionals but it's it's also got a lot of ex professionals and players like myself who are trying to get back to that level So it's a really competitive, um, and the quality is, I think, higher than higher than some people expect. But again, it's not it's not the Premier League. Yeah, it's a long way to go to to the Prem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's definitely um, definitely possible. Like uh, this, 
obviously really good examples in terms of like Jamie Jamie Vardy was could yeah. come up from even below this league. I think Ollie Watkins or I think it's is it Ollie Watkins? Um, might not be Ollie Watkins. I probably use the wrong person there, but there is a lot of a lot of players who who can jump up. Obviously, it's the Premier League is is everybody's goal, but even the leagues are but like League One, League Two, which is classed as the professional leagues, is is, is definitely possible. There's like tens of hundreds of players who who make that move from my league to the leagues above. So so that's yeah, that's why I, I continue to play in. In this league. Well, well, talking about FC United of Manchester, and some some people in in our, in our country, right, in Indonesia, um, FC United of Manchester becomes you know like a, an example for some you know punk football, uh, sort of you know because uh, they, yeah, they they take example like in FC United. So uh, good luck with your career, just have another year, another goal, another dream. Now, and I also, um read about um i actually looked out at your instagram profile and then it states yeah. that you are a player plus coach can you tell me more about yeah. it yeah so again on the on the topic of semi-professional with with what i'm doing at the moment all the players and the teams in our league they don't train full time so they don't train monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday they'll they'll train in the evenings on tuesday in the evenings on thursday and our games will be on a Saturday. So there's a lot of time in the week where we like where people will aim to fill with with work. Now people will do things like labouring, some people might work in office, some people work in sports and sports teams. And for myself, I work in coaching. Um so my coaching journey started when I was back at Blackburn Rovers. So when I was um when I was 18, I, I used to work with the younger age groups while I was still a player there. I used to work with the under 11s, the 11 year old boys. And then when I transitioned then into semi pro, I wanted to go back into that, that feeling of coaching because I enjoy, um, I enjoy sort of passing on my information. And not only do I enjoy it, but I'm confident in myself. So I believe I'm a good coach and I have a lot to, to offer those younger, the younger generation. And that's who I'm kind of working with at the moment. Anywhere from the, I've worked with the youngest of like six years old, all the way up until 15, 16, who also have the same, um, the same goals and same journey, the same ideas of, of pushing on and getting to the top of the football pyramid. But, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of what, what I do now. So as, as, as well as my, my playing career, I wanted to do something which engages my um, engages my brain, still within that football role, and like I said, it's something I, I enjoy. I mean, I'm good at so so yeah. That's a it's a big part of what I do now. But I, I still say that the playing and um, my career as a player is what I'm really driving to push on. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because um, you are still like at 22 or 23 years old now. I'm 21. I'm still I'm 21. 21. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I mean, but you you decided you have decided to become a, a a coach as a side job. Is it right? As a side job. Yeah, I, I guess you could call it that. Um and it's not just something that I want to do for now. It's yeah. Hopefully my playing career, I go back into full time football and I'm, I may not be able to to have this side job, but I think in any footballer's career, if we're lucky, we'll yeah. keep on playing until 35. If you're really lucky, maybe 40. So I see it as an opportunity to sort of set my career up after I finish playing. So if I get the experience now, as soon as I stop playing, I can go, okay, I, knew I, I know I can do this. I've got experience. People will be able to see my experience. And then I'll be, it'll be easy for me to transition as well as being something that is good for me now because it gets me engaged, it gets me thinking about a different side of the game because I think that's a really big part of it. What you see as a player can sometimes be different as what you see as a coach and only as a coach will you be able to see that. Yeah. Um, do you do this alone? Uh, you know, the coaching and everything? You, no. So <laughs> I do a mixture. I do yeah. parts in team um, and work with coaches. So the coaching setup that that I work with on some of some of the days of the week 
is working with some coaches who, who used to be at Manchester United's academy, actually, and, and they're really highly experienced, so it's good for me to learn off them. Um, and that's for a team in Manchester called Spotted by FC. And they're a team working with, like, ages from, like, 13 to 15, but try to offer players, um, like I said before, a pathway to get into an academy and eventually push on to, to, to go further. But I also do my own personal, like, coaching with, like, one-to-one work or small groups, and that'll be with current professionals. So as of, like, probably for the last two months, I've worked with players from Brighton. Um, I've worked from, with players from Salford City. I work with players from Stockport. I work with players from, I don't know where else, Shrewsbury, Morecambe, like, really, like, some some of them really established, some of them still 21, 22, going, trying to go higher. But it's good to get that experience and to feel what it's, it's like coaching with those players. Um, but that's that's my, my own personal. So that's when I'm on my own. And I also have when I'm working with a team. Okay, that's so interesting about you and your career. Hopefully, hopefully you can uh, continue doing that. And maybe after 15 years, after you retire, after you, until you stop playing football, you can continue doing that. And uh, now, Joe, or Joseph, or Fergie, <laughs> uh, uh, we will discuss about um, your Indonesian roots. Yeah. So you, uh, can you tell me where the word Simatupang uh, came from? Is it from your mom or your dad or your grandmother or your grandfather? Yeah, so it comes from uh, originally my grand, well, my mom, my mom's dad, so my grandfather. Uh, my mom is fully Indonesian. She moved to the UK um, just before, well, 1997, I think it is now. But um, my mom is from Pontianak, where I'm Pontianak. Batak. So the Samatapan comes from my grandfather's um, grandfather's name. Um, but yeah. I have a really big family. My my mum is one of ten siblings, so you can imagine a lot of cousins, a lot of aunties, a lot of uncles, and and yeah, so that's where my my Indonesian roots come from, um, Pontianak. So you you know you know about Batak culture, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, like I'm I'm not going to say like I don't obviously live in Indonesia. I don't and I don't have the the experience of being around it all the time but of course I, I used to visit like we used to visit every year before covid we used to go over every year um that i've been alive really so maybe 15 16 times and um it's really nice to get involved in the in the culture when i when i go back and so i would do it with family and friends um back in indo so your your family from from mother side uh, lives in indonesia which part of indonesia do you come to every year before covid everywhere been and- to Surabaya, <laughs> been to lombok been to jakarta oh. bali when i was really young pontianak so most of the time jakarta bali but mm-hmm. also I've, tra- i've traveled um here and there in, in indonesia yeah because because If you are Batak, if you are Batak, if you have you have the name Simatupang, everywhere you go in Indonesia, you will meet your brothers, your sisters. <laughs> yeah. You are so welcome, like oh, yeah. Simatupang, oh, Simatupang, my brother. You will meet your aunts, your 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 uncles, <laughs> everything. On one hundred percent, and I oh, think that's okay. what that's what's different to the to the UK. And I don't want to. I'm not disrespecting the UK, <laughs> but that is a, is a clear difference. What. When you go over to Indonesia, or even when you meet someone abroad who, who shares the same sort of blo- the Batak blood, you automatically have that connection, and that's a connection that, that you can feel that as an English person you don't, you won't necessarily get that with another English English person. So those are the differences in culture which I I really respect, and I think it's a um, it's a good part of being Indonesian, a good part of being Batak, which which I feel and my brothers feel my my family feel okay um so next one is about who pushed you to become a footballer is it your mom is it your dad who yeah you know like those oh you have to be a good uh, you have to be a footballer one time one day who? so that's a good question and i think maybe people expect maybe your mom or dad but in, for me nobody it's it's just me and i think that's what that's got to be 
for me that's how i would raise um that's how i would raise uh, somebody else or if i was giving somebody else advice the the want and the desire and the belief has to become from has to come from yourself and i think in england the culture is football football is is so integrated into the culture where we play it in school we play it after school we play it before school so you have the opportunity to play football but if you want to become a footballer the the inspiration has to come from within because it's a ha- it's a really hard process um and my mum and dad were very supportive but they never pushed they, they, they would never say you have to do this or we want you to do this it was it was totally up to me and i think that's why still now i have that same drive to to pursue to progress my career because it comes from me it doesn't come from anybody else yeah it's it comes naturally as a as an as a boy in england is it yeah 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 you ask i think if you asked any any boy or you asked 80% would say mm-hmm. i want to be a, become a professional footballer okay um do you remember uh, the moment when you realized that okay uh, being a footballer is my dream and i have to chase it i have to do it, i have to work hard did you remember the time yeah so when i was probably about well when i was 11 actually is when i joined Blackburn Rovers academy but previously so i live in in Oldham um so our local mm-hmm. team Oldham Athletic yeah. back then they were a professional side and they had, a, they had an academy i used to play for Oldham when i was maybe eight years old and long story short it didn't work out they said we we're not going to keep you on and it was it was a, it was a tough moment for, for me as being so young but it's normal it happens to not just me so many other people um so fast forward a couple of years i was just playing with my friends and still taking it seriously but not not playing in the academy i was playing all the time but not in the academy and then i got an opportunity to play for blackburn and the first trial that i had in a game situation i knew i was really good like i felt really good felt really confident i was quick so i thought i'm today i'm powerful i was doing the right things and not only that i really enjoyed it and then when they, after that game or after that little tournament they approached my dad and, and me and said look we want to sign and i think at that moment i knew that i have what it takes i still got a, i still got a, a lot to learn but it gave me the confidence to to say look i, I want to have more opportunities like this i want to have, i want to feel the same as this where i've worked hard i've done well and then i've got the reward for it so that was the moment i think when i was 11 and i had my first trial at blackburn and they came to me after the game and said okay we we we, we want to take you forward i knew then that this is my goal this is what i what i can do so if i keep on working hard enough then hopefully i can turn it into to the to the dream that i want it to to eventually be yeah i mean why 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 full back you have pace you have um speed why why you chose full back did you did you oh that's a good position i think it's a good position but i mean did you find it when you were in 11 when you were 11 and when you entered uh, an academy so yeah good question no um when i was joining the academy i was a winger so right wing left wing striker only until i was maybe 16 years old i, I became a full back and like i said previously i was a winger and i think like 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 you're alluding to maybe a winger is more more glamorous right it's more yeah. um, where people want to play but in, in terms of my journey as a as a as a young boy from 11 to 15 i was playing winger striker i even played center mid but i was doing good and i i maintained my position in the academy but i probably wasn't doing en- enough to really push on and then one day one of the coaches said look we're going to try and pl- put you a- as a right back just to see how it's like and then for that year i had my best year i had my best year as a as a young boy playing football and that was the time when they offered me when 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 you're playing in england in an academy when you reach the age of, age of 16 
they give you a decision of whether they're going to take you on and become a, a scholar. So you go and stay at the academy for two years, you go and train every day, play and um, go in the gym every day. So you, you're basically a full-time player. Um, so that was before the transition of me to, to a right back. But like like you said, the attributes that, that you just said, I'm quick, powerful, strong, those are really good for a fullback. If you look at, don't know, maybe the best fullbacks in the world, Alfonso Davis is strong, quick, powerful. You've got Kyle Walker, strong, quick, powerful. <laughs> so I think a lot of players maybe fit that script. So I just fit that script in the moment. And now I've um, sort of mastered my role. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched uh, some of your videos and you do look like uh, uh, probably in Indonesia, we know Asnawi Mangkualam. He, he is a right fullback, a right yeah, full back, sometimes wing back in the right. And you do look like, I mean, in this uh, style of play, you do look like uh, Kai Walker probably and Trent Alexander-Arnold and Aaron Wan Bisaka is, I think you look like the, the way you play, the way you play, play yeah. right? Because because he has strong, uh, he has strength, he has um, pace and just like you, whoa, this, this Joseph is <laughs> really fast <laughs> and strong, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I appreciate appreciate that. They're, they're really good people to be to be likened to. But yeah, I I I aim to be sort of a mixture of of all of all them people. And if I can get anywhere close to what those players have achieved, then it's it's going to be successful. But I also want to sort of create my own identity. Do you know what I mean? I want to be, especially with Indonesia, hopefully one day that I can play in front of the fans of Indonesia, in front of the people of Indonesia, then I can also show that this is who who you could try and be like, or this is what a right back looks like. This is what how Joseph um, and Samatwang plays. Um but yeah, I think it's important, like you said, to this Wan Basaka, Kyle Walker, Trent Alexander Arnold, they're all different players. They're all different styles. They have similar abilities in in different ways, but also things that have completely different um so i try to to work on to work on all, all of those aspects but in terms of what i offer and, I, and i'll always say that i offer is defensively as a as a full back i'm really strong i'm really aggressive in 1v1 situations and on the ball i'm good i've got the quality to play forward and also my strength and my speed i can get up and down quick um so that's some, that's what i offer and that and I think that's what people like FC FC United or Blackburn or Marine and my previous clubs. That's why they they wanted me, and that's why they want me to play because I offer those those um, attributes to them. Okay, um, Joseph. Uh, now we are going to talk about uh, whether or not the Indonesian Federation have approached you. So, um, firstly, in two thousand twenty two, you met um, Indonesian. Indonesian Embassy, Mr. Desra Perjaya, is it correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's correct. Happened? Yeah, yeah. What what happened there? Um, so Pat Desra uh, approached me over Instagram, and um, can I just say what what an amazing guy, like unbelievable guy. What I think what he's done for for the people over here, uh, the Indonesian people over here is, I think. Everybody's thankful, and we recognise him as um, such a good figure. And for me personally, such a such a nice guy, and a humble guy. Um, but yeah, in terms of my relationship with him, it started over. I think Instagram. He messaged me on Instagram and asked me to come down to the embassy. Asked me if I'd like to come down to the embassy. Um, and we sort of spoke, and and we. I think I handed him a shirt at the time, and sort of our our relations started. Our relationship started from there, and and since then, I've been down to see him um, a couple more times. He's come up to Manchester, and when he comes up to Manchester, I help him out and and uh, drive him about. But but yeah, uh, at the time we that's how we were introduced. Yeah, is it some is it related to um, your nationality or the probably the chance to? To uh to become an Indonesian national team player at the time, if you don't mind telling us. Yeah, no, that was um totally unrelated to 
to the to the fact um, of of trying to get me to join uh, the national team. It was it was purely to to um, to start a relationship and and um, forget for me to come down to the embassy and to come see him and sort of spend time with him and for him to come and get to know me and sort of help publicize me. But it was it, there was no sort of agenda in terms of like trying to get me to come on board or anything like that. I think um I think if if you know Pat Desra then he's um he's a very yeah. honest man. Yeah. So it, it so it was not about um Pat Desra trying to convince you to join the national team. It's just, just a no. it's, it's just a normal normal uh yeah. Meet. yeah. Okay. So um have the Indonesian Federation approached you to um you know offer it to you to uh to offer you to uh to become a national team player um back then in 2000 early 2000 post covid probably it was was it post covid yeah but it was just it was just talk it wasn't um an official invitation because obviously this procedure and like I said at the time At the time, I was I was injured. I'd fractured my back, and I'm I hadn't been playing for for months. So there was no point, or there was nothing that we could really do from both sides for me to get over there. Um, but that's how that situation kind of happened, and then and then stops it. But it wasn't it wasn't that um, we didn't advance proceedings, if you like. Yeah. So at the time, did you feel that you? Uh, you know, sort of you want to want to play for Indonesia or just you you know just as it yeah as you know just um you wait for another for another chance or what? It's never been anything where it's like oh I'll just do it or maybe it will see. As soon as I uh, I knew and I found out that I was eligible, yeah. I was excited. I, I think it's a it's a great opportunity, um not only for my For myself, but for the national team, because hopefully I can, co- I'd be going in there to contribute. Um, but yeah, it, it's always been something that has, has has given me excitement and something that I've been wanting to do. Um, but of course, my 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 playing career and my personal career is, as I'll always be honest, it, it's it's the most important for me. Um, it's the most important for me, and it'll, it'll always be the most important. But I think playing for the national team or having the chance to play for the national team is, is something that I'd be honoured to do, and I'd be really looking forward to to doing. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, apart from that, um, do you do you watch um, Indonesian national team playing in the recent years, probably one or two years back? In the past one or two years, I feel like you can't you can't not because it's exciting, right? Like they made progress, um, really good progress, and I see it all over Instagram, TikTok. Obviously, I can't go there and watch the games, but you can't. It's, it's impossible not to 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 see it because when the team's successful, and rightly so, it should be it should be publicized, and I, I managed to see see parts of it um so yeah I, i've seen i've seen the progress that it's made and again that that sort of inspires me to to want to be part of that um and inspires me to think the opportunity the opportunity is there and i think going back to obviously uh, our the start of this conversation or the start of the previous conversation in the other video i understand that obviously i'm not at a full-time team anymore i'm not a blackburn and it's not it's not necessarily glamorous but playing with with men in a, in a in a competitive league for when money's on the line and when when there's thousands of people watching you which sometimes there is at, at, at our level is giving me massive experience experience that i wouldn't have got if i if i was at blackburn still 80s like i've got played nearly 50 games i think Um, in a men's competitive environment, which, like I said, even some some lads who were still at still at um, who were at other clubs may not have had. So it gives me great experience. Um, obviously, there's, a, there's still a lot for me to do, and as well as my 
my uh, recent experience, I, I know my attributes, like before we're talking about the type of player that I am, I feel like not only do I fit into the role that could possibly be awaiting for me at, in Indonesia, but I believe in, in time and I'm, and I'm someone who, who will speak honestly and what, what I believe in is I am and I will be capable to to play for the likes of of Indonesia and um, to play in a in a full time team. Otherwise, I won't be playing football now. I won't be playing football at this level because it's it's not necessarily glamorous, but it's real. Like I'm sure, if people came down to watch watch the games, you, you'd see that people are, <laughs> are putting the bodies on the line, putting putting money on the line. So it's it gives me good confidence in myself. And sorry, I've probably gone a little bit off off topic, but bringing it back to your question, that's the excitement that I have when I'm thinking about Indonesia. And not necessarily, a, it wouldn't be a, a frustration because, you know, things happened back then when I was approached, it, it wasn't maybe at the right time. But I believe now or any time in the future, if I'm fit and I'm, and I'm healthy and the the call was made or they'd asked me to come over i believe that i have what it takes or i will have what it takes to um to to compete with the um compete with the other players um and and hopefully bring more success for to an already successful team yeah uh, earlier in our video you said you mentioned shin Yong. did you ever talk to him or got him no no no, um, I haven't. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Um, uh, now we move into another session. So, well, I am going to show you some picture in your Instagram, and I want you to uh, tell us the story behind it. Behind it. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is probably one of the most popular in your Instagram post. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you tell us? Can you tell us what's the story behind it? So that is the day that I signed my scholarship for Blackburn Rovers. Like I said before, when you're at the age of 16 in the UK, um, professional academies will decide whether or not they are going to take you on to be um, a scholar and offer you a scholarship. A scholarship program is two years, and you get opportunities to train with the first team. You train every day at Blackburn, you, you stay over. So I, I left my house and lived in Blackburn. Um, they ate, they, you, you ate with the team, slept, you <laughs> did everything with this team. Yeah. Yeah, um, but that was the day that I signed my contract. That was the day that we, we went in and signed after being offered, which is probably one of the, the most... Um, it was, a, it was a proud day for me, so probably one of the most proudest days that, that I've had. Um, which good, good day and good, good memories. Yeah. When was it? Uh, was it sixteen or fifteen or seventeen at the time? So I would have been that time. I'm fifteen or sixteen. So it's still youth contract, not yet to professional contract. No, so you, you paid. Um, and it's you stay over there, but it's uh, it's still class of scholarship. Um, yeah. Okay. And then the next picture, I will pick it randomly because yeah. it's so very interesting. You often um, post you against Arsenal. Okay, this one. Okay, this one. Did you do you remember this? Why why did you um, post this? Is this a real story behind it? Um, no, I think that when I was playing Arsenal, I think February 2021, I want to I want to say off the top of my head. Um, I remember that game because I scored in that game. Uh, oh, so yeah. not often as a right back, I don't score that many goals. So yeah. if I do, then I probably talk about it more than I should. But um, yeah, there was no particular reason. It was just uh, I thought it was a good yeah. picture. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was I was happy with the goal, but back then at that time, so in that time period from my scholarship to um, the picture that you just shown, that's when I started to start see the the increase in terms of my social media following from Indonesia. I think people started to 
to get wind of like the fact that I'm Indonesian and I have Indonesian roots and there was a lot of like news things and YouTube videos. Um, so the posts that I was putting out were ne not necessarily, not necessarily for for a reason. It was just kind of just putting my my usual posts out there. Whereas if you you sort of look at my posts now, I'm not sure if you're going to bring any up from from recent, but in terms of my coaching and my playing and my story, what I'm trying to do now is to tell the story of me to not just the Indonesian people, but English people, young people who maybe have gone through a similar journey from playing at Blackburn to, to now playing in Northern Premier League, um, to playing semi-pro. I want to tell my story, my journey, and sort of bring people along and so they can see and hopefully, I don't know, maybe taking like some inspiration, maybe take things that they wouldn't do or would do. But um that if you look at my post now compared to then, it's is more I'm trying to 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 show to show the story and like I said with the coaching, I'm I'm trying to help people improve and with my social media, hopefully. Don't know, could it have the same effect. I, I hope so. Yeah, and I I think you always um uh, put Indonesian language in the cap. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you speak Indonesia any whole and with your mom or with family? Sedikit. Sedikit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um uh -huh. I speak I speak with my with my mom. Yeah. Um I speak with my mom regularly. But maybe when she wants to tell me some if we're in a big group with English people, maybe she wants to tell me some secret uh, she'll yeah. <laughs> in Indonesia. Um but okay. Let's yeah. try uh, one sentence, probably one sentence that your mom usually uh, speak to you in Indonesian language. Um, one sentence. Ada sudah makan. Oh, anything like that, like um, just just like little things. Um, so you you reply your mom with Indonesian too, or? Y yeah, of course. Yeah. Like I can't. <laughs> um, I can't do it in English. Should I say yeah, me sudah. So okay. um, <laughs> yeah. What else? What else? Uh, obviously, that's really basic, and um, I'm probably a bit shyer in front of people. Like sometimes people I don't know it, with my mom, I'm probably a bit more confident. Um, but that's something again I, I want to improve. And in terms of the video things and like the subtitles, I I, I know the subtitles don't translate perfectly to <laughs> to uh, to Bahasa and to Bahasa people uh, speaking people. So. Hopefully, I can uh, when I go back over and and things like that, I can improve it. But but yeah, it's it's not. I'm not going to say it's the greatest. It's um, it's okay. So yeah, you can understand when people speak Indonesia, but you just you are too shy to reply them <laughs> on a bit Indonesian, right? I think it's yeah, really yeah. in Indonesia too that um, yeah, a lot of people in Indonesia know understand that people speak English, but too shy to respond in yeah. English. Something like that. Yeah, no, no, I feel the same. I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, the next post. I'm so curious about this one. Indonesian does non league Champions League day one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I want I want I want to hear directly from you. What is, what is it all about? A national league a non league champions league. What is it all about? So you understand the the idea of the Champions League, right? You know yeah, yeah. the set up, and obviously it's for the for Premier League. Oh, we're not just Premier League teams, but the top teams in Europe. So FC United enter enter the it's called the Phoenix Trophy, which is kind of recognised in non league clubs as the the non league Champions League. So oh, it's famous. It's famous. I'd say it's famous to to people sort of in, in Europe who 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 are fans of non-league football, um, but it gives it gives non-league team the opportunity to to play in to play in Europe. So we play. I played in Paris. Played in um, Lake Lake Garda, which is the the videos that you've seen. But because obviously I joined FC later on in the season, they'd already been to Poland. The teams that played over here as well, so it's like a it's like a uh, Champions League setup. So you play your group group stages, and then you have a, like a finals in Italy. So I need to. I'm still yet to put out the last video, which is the the day of the final. But 
um if you if you have a, if you have a look on on those videos that are already on my page it is kind of showing the story of the the start to the finals so the quarter, the semi-finals and and then subsequently the final so yeah the, the player from the from the lower leagues can experience the european vibes is it correct? yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so we got team so there's There was us from England. There's a team in Enfield, which is near London, and and a team called Lewis. And then there's teams from Prague, um, in Czech, I Czech Republic. There was teams from Poland. There was teams from Paris. It's literally all of Europe. So it's official. It, it's official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's official. It's uh, it's it's recognized. Perfect. Okay. I think the next one I. I am also curious about uh, this one. You take a photo with the twins, Bagas Bagus. Bagas and Bagas. <laughs> yeah. So you you contact each other you regularly. Oh, how how do you meet? How did you meet them? So it started. I don't know if you you will. You I imagine you're aware of the uh, Garuda Select. Ah, oh, Garuda Select. Okay, I know. So when I was playing for Blackburn, we actually played Garuda Select and uh, the Twins were playing. Yeah. And we spoke a little bit after the game. They they spoke to my parents, spoke to my mom, And then I think it would have been year, maybe a year later. Yeah. I think Bagos um, just messaged me over Instagram um, and then said, look, I'm back in, back in Manchester. Do you want to hang out? So then... We went to Old Trafford and then <laughs> we ended up going for something to eat and I kind of got speaking from there, really. And we don't speak that that regularly. Um, when he was back in Manchester, when that picture was taken, I think I just messaged him and said, look, if, you, if you're around then, um, let's go and do something. And he was with his brother at the time as well. So that's the first time I'd really been introduced to, to his brother, but... But yeah, that's the little story behind uh, behind that one. Yeah, Bagas and Bagus actually once uh, swapped position. So either Bagas or Bagus was a uh, right fullback. So you've got a competition with the. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, and they are a decent fullback actually because um, Bagas was uh, chosen into the under 23 Asian Cup with Indonesian national team a few months yeah. back. So I think I think you've got competition there, Joseph. Yeah, <laughs> you've got competition. Any competition is good competition. <laughs> okay, uh, the last one I think you with the most um, famous and powerful people in Indonesia. I think it's um, Rafi Ahmad and his wife. How did you? Yeah. How did you meet them? Do you know each other in the real life or? Not? So uh, it was through, it was through mutual. Um, I, we have a mutual uh, friend, and he was down in London at the time. And he said, "Hey, Joseph, you want to come down and we'll we grab lunch?" And we, that's the first time I, I, I met him. Um, and again, a really nice, really nice guy, and really nice family, and, and enjoyed spending enjoyed spending time with them. Uh, Rafi Abad actually owns a, a club. Uh, it calls Rans Nusantara FC, and uh, they are re- relegated last season, so they will play in a uh, League Two or Liga Dua. Yeah, Liga Dua. <laughs> so, uh, if the chance come, do you want to? Have you ever, uh, you know, considered playing in Indonesia one time? So. In terms of playing in in Indonesia, it's something that I'd be I'd be open to. Of course, the the the, the deal and the and the the, the all round package and the team and sort of where it is and there's a lot of a bigger picture in terms of making it make sense, not just for the for the club but for myself because I'd have to move my my whole my whole life really to to Indonesia. But obviously, the good thing is with that is that I'm I'm half Indonesian, so. I already have a lot of family there. I already feel like it's a second home, um, and yeah, it's something that if if the opportunity came about, and I still have to wait up with the opportunities that I have here, 
um, because obviously in England is probably one of the best places to get experience in playing football from from young, even when you, when you start to get older. But but in terms of playing in Indonesia and the opportunities over there, I, I see not just the success and the growth of the mm-hmm. um, the national team, but also the growth and the success in uh, Liga Satu. So um, it's something that, like I said, if if he's right, and I, I'd like to I'd like to see I like to see what what opportunities that that could come from that and. I know and I believe that whatever I have um, as a player would be would be beneficial to to most teams, if not if not every team, hopefully. Because, like I said, I back myself as a player, and in terms of my experience now playing in a in a in a men's environment, I've got a lot of history, sort of playing in academies, and and, and I believe I'm a I'm a talented and and hardworking player, so. The opportunity is right, and and things, things are things are good. Then I never say no to to the, to an opportunity like that. Yeah. Okay. I think it's more than we promised to you. It was more than 40 minutes actually, but it's okay. It's really entertaining. It's really fun. It's really it's pleasure to have you here, Joseph. Joe. Sama. Abang Joseph. Indonesia. Abang Joseph. Uh, say hi to your mom and thank you once again very much. Yeah, terima kasih. Uh, thank you. So much. Thank you as well. Um, appreciate it, and um, I've I've enjoyed speaking to you. Yeah, you're like a good guy. So hopefully I'll uh, see, you. <laughs> see you. If you come soon. to Indonesia, if you come to Indonesia, you come to our office and we can uh, play some fun football. Actually, in front of our office, there there is a mini put, football pitch, and we can play together with your well, brother. You think you can? You think you, you can? Uh, <laughs> you think you can uh, take me on? Yeah, of course. Why not? It's just uh, what position? <laughs> what, what, what position do you play? I actually, well, it depends. If I, I can play as a goalkeeper and a centre back, but I enjoy playing as centre back actually. Okay, so I'll be the right back. You be the centre back. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Once again, thank you very much for your time, and we thank you. Time. Uh, for bothering you, I'm sorry. Uh, you have no, no. busy no schedule over there. Hopefully, and respect, and hopefully your career with FC United of Manchester uh, can uh, can uh, be as you want, be as uh, everyone their hope, and to see FC United Manchester playing against Manchester United and Premier League one day. <laughs> thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Oh, thank you. Terima kasih juga.